Welcome everyone. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for stopping by today. Well anyway, I thought I'd make a little video today about things that you just don't never see. We all do metal detecting and we see all kinds of videos. But I want to talk about something about just safety. And what I mean by safety is digging alone. A lot of times you got a buddy with you and that's fine. I, that It's fun to share. But a lot of times you don't. You go digging by yourself. Now I'm not talking about digging in a yard or a ball field or a playground or behind somebody's house. I'm talking about in the deep woods. And if you've watched my videos, you'll notice that I'm not in no yard. I'm in some rough places. Some places, it takes me a mile to get back in there from my truck. And if I'm lucky, I can get a four-wheeler back in there most of the way, but not all the way. Some places are just inaccessible. And I just like to search for old history back in the middle of these deep woods that's abandoned and forgotten about. Old road beds, old farming communities, just old settlers and pioneer places. What I'm going to talk about is some safety tips that you need to keep in mind if you're going to be off by yourself like I do back in these deep woods metal detector. So y'all stick around and we'll get started. Now guys these safety rules they apply to about anything hunting, fishing, just anything. So if you're hunting along here's some rules you need to go by. Take your cell phone for communications just to call for help. And if you don't have a phone or can't get a signal on your phone let somebody know where you're at and what time you'll be back. And the second one, if you don't know the area, take along a map of the area or, or GPS. Now I don't have a GPS, but they are pretty handy. So I just, I always like maps. Know your limitations. This goes what your physical condition is, what your age is, what your ability is. You know your limitations. So just take care of yourself out there. There's nobody else to take care of you. And number four, always take some water along and just to keep yourself hydrated and get wore out and sweaty. You, you, you need some water to stay hydrated and take you some snacks because you do get hungry. I stay some long days in these woods. Number five, be prepared for southern weather changes. Now it's according to what time of year it is. If it's winter time, it may just suddenly start snowing on you, or in the summer, just suddenly come up a thunderstorm raise up on you before you get back to your vehicle. So make sure you take your poncho or a hood or a good jacket. And the most of all is don't take risk. When you're by yourself, if you take a risk doing something, crossing a log, crossing a creek, or trying to climb a rock ledge or something and slip off, there you'll be. So don't take no risk, it's not worth it. And always expect the unexpected because you don't never know what's gonna happen. Now keep in mind, there's an old saying, Luck favors the prepared. If you're not prepared, you could be caught in some bad situations in these deep woods. Or just anywhere, just about for that matter. So it's best to be prepared. It's better to have than to have not when you need it. Now guys, I try to I try to try to go mobile and real light on equipment as best I can because I'm in some rugged, accessible places. Ain't just inaccessible. But I'll show you some of the stuff that I carry just to be light and mobile. I carry my pouch with all my little, little tools and necessities on it. Of course, my tripod for recording. My metal detector. My pouch with all my little goodies in it. A water bottle that clips onto my belt. And of course, I carry this. And you'll say, why, why do you want to carry that? Well, I'm going to show you why. I've seen a lot of stuff in 50 years. 
these animals don't bother me if I don't bother them. But I have seen some of them that ain't right. They're mad, rabies, young, just, I have seen some bad things and you always be prepared for them. Like an old coon that's on rabies, they'll just charge you. I've had to put down a couple of them. And here's one thing you don't want to, you don't want to surprise an old bear he's up there feeding or a mama got young, you got problems. But mostly I just have snake problems, just watching for snakes. But these animals don't bother me if I don't bother them. But sometimes there's something wrong with them, so I always be prepared. Now, as far as the essentials go that I carry on my person, here's my little pouch. It's just an old work pouch I converted over to make my tools work, put clips on it. It clips right on your belt. Here's my digging tool. I can't use a shovel not in these rocks. I had to probe. Here's just a little old golf club cover that zips up just to put my little fines in. It clips right on my bag. And this comes in handy on my shotgun shells. I can clean them up and up to read them a little bit out in the field. And I keep a knife here for cutting roots or whatever I need a knife for. And here's something I don't use very rarely, but I do need it as a magnifying glass just to read, read coins. And I don't find many coins in these old woods, but I do find a few. So, this old pouch does pretty good. I've got it out of just a little old workman's tool pouch. Converted it over. Now here, you can see everything stacked in it real good. It does a real, real good job, but it's real compact right on your side. Now here, my old backpack or satchel, whatever you want to use, I keep a little military first aid kit in there with some, something for a headache and just band-aids and patching up stuff. And here you need a good little strong flashlight because sometimes I run into some caves. Keep an old pair of gloves in here for handling some stuff you don't want to handle sometimes. I always keep a match and a lighter with me when I'm out in the woods. You never know when you have to build you a little fire or something, stay all night or anything. You keep some clean rags to wash your hands or face or wipe the sweat off of you and keep some extra water. So that's about all. Then you keep your little snacks in here and food. But here's a really important item in the summertime to keep the ticks off of you and the bugs. Of course, of course they still get on you, but this helps a lot. And then my other, if I'm able to get my four-wheeler back in this old remote country, I have got a few more heavy duty essentials on here. I have got a winch on this thing. Here I've got some fold out shovels and little hatchets. I run into logs or something, I've got to cut brush out. And here, if I really got to get a brush back in a bad place, get stuck, I, I've got something to cut some big brush with. I keep a, a little shovel and a little hole with me for, for digging, but that's about it. Now back to the woods now, before you get down on the ground and you find a target, it's best to just really look around your surroundings, around your immediate perimeter here. Make sure there ain't no snakes or yellow jacket's nest or hornet's nest or you're digging in poison ivy or anything just before you start digging. Now here these, these woods are full of old dead trees. Their limbs falling out and then on a windy day you'll have entire trees fall on. So it wouldn't be good to be under one of these trees so watch your surroundings, okay? And I was sitting here one day down digging and I've had a turkey a couple different occasions run at me wide open like just about run into me until they realized what I was and they'd veer off but I thought they was going to hit me but 
there. Uh, yeah, I'm a turkey, all right. That's not the kind of turkey they're looking for. Now, as you ease through these woods, best thing you can do is watch every step you make. Wherever you're going to step, you look, because they may be a snake you don't want to step on one of them. Cross logs, behind rocks, hiding places. Just watch where you step and ease your way through there. Just like hunting or anything else. Just common sense. These old snakes will be laying anywhere. Now most of the thing I've seen, I've not seen no poisonous snakes, thank the Lord. I've just seen black snakes, racers, copper, no copperheads, no rattlesnakes, but they are around. So you just watch where you step, watch where you sit. I try to stay out of places like this in the hot weather, because this is a good place for a snake's den or one coiled up under a rock. That's not a good spot. But in the winter time, this is when I like to wire these places out. So now, if you do get snake bit, take your phone, call ahead, tell them you've been snake bit. And whatever you do, the worst thing you can do out in there by yourself is panic. Don't never panic. Just keep you calm. Work your way out of there. And like I said, if you got snake bit and you think it's a poisonous snake, kill the snake, cut the head off or whatever, and take it with you to the emergency room. Or call ahead and have an ambulance meet you at your truck. So that's just common sense. Whatever you do, don't panic. Don't exert yourself. And don't tie it off real tight. Best to let the snake bite bleed a little bit to, if it is poisonous to not get in your system too bad. So, worst thing you could do is panic. So, these old woods are fun and I love them to death. But they can be a problem. I've, I've, even, I've even had times where nature called and uh, happened to be right at a yellow jacket's nest and <laughs> it ain't fun running through the woods with your britches down so <laughs> I've had some wild occasions over the years in these woods I've seen some some bad things with these animals I've seen some insects and poison ivy I mean it's just it's just part of life of growing up in these mountains but anyway just keep your head and keep common sense about yourself and enjoy yourself Guys, remember this, this apply to hunting, fishing, hiking, just exploring anything out in the great outdoors. Well, guys, I hope these little tips helped you. It's just for your own safety. So, y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.